Research Team. Our next speaker is Ms. Lin Dalany, Managing Director and Co-Owner of Graphene One LLC. She will share with us on bringing graphene to our day-to-day -day life. Let's welcome Lin. Hi, good morning, good afternoon. I'm very excited to be here and uh, to be a part of the uh, um, Hong Kong International Sourcing Show. And also thank our par group partner, um, uh, Advanced Denim, for giving us this opportunity to be a part of it. Today, I'm going to introduce uh, uh, our company and also our current technology. Uh, here with me is my colleague, Roman Henricar. Um, let me first introduce myself. My name is uh, Lingxia Delini. I'm the co-owner of the QS Group and uh, also I'm the founder of uh, Graphing One LLC. And uh, Roman is uh, the general manager of the QS Group and uh, he is also the C CTO of uh, the Kyrene Division. So let me give a little bit background of the company. So our company um, is, um, we have uh, three divisions. The group is called the QS Group. Uh, we were founded in 1993 uh, with the first division is actually a safety uh, glove manufacturer. Over the year, we grew our business and we became uh, one of the biggest, largest uh, uh, glove manufacturer uh, in the world. So um, in 2007, we started another division, which is a, a manufacturer and uh, installer of uh, solar panels. So we produce uh, solar panels and we also install solar parks. Um, actually, because of the solar division, it brings us to the uh, graphing uh, field. The reason we start to develop uh, uh, the graphing technology or to try to discover this technology was because of the solar. Uh, back in 2009, we were talking to multiple universities in the world, uh, in the US, in Australia, uh, try to understand better the graphing material to use in the solar panel to improve the solar efficiency. Actually, by doing that, um, we kind of explore this technology also in the textile because uh, we own the safety division. Uh, we use a lot of textile. We're familiar with uh, polyamide, polyester. We use a lot of, uh, um, for instance, uh, Dyneema and also Kevlar, uh, all type of uh, uh, different yarns. So um, this, this um, became a, like more and more um, advanced in, in, in that field. Actually, it took us uh, quite a while, almost like nine years to scale up the graphing uh, production. Um, and then later on, uh, we use the graphing uh, in the different uh, poly, polyamides uh, or also polyester. Uh, let me go to the next page. Uh, okay, let me also speak a little bit about the, the armor guys and uh, graphing one. So in 2014, um, I relocated myself to uh, the U.S. and this started division of uh, Amogaz and uh, Graphene One. Amogaz is a distribution company selling uh, safety products, uh, mainly gloves, and uh, cover all 50 states in the U.S. And uh, we have been uh, very successful in the last five years. And uh, in 2015, we also started another division called Graphene One LLC, which is a distribution of uh, uh, the carrying yarn uh, in North America. You're talking about the graphing. Um, so everyone is very excited, you know, when we talk about graphing. If you go on YouTube, you see a lot of, uh, you know, uh, videos and about graphing. Uh, the research has been really enormous from different fields. We are in the textile business, so we focus on the yarn. But uh, truly, uh, because it's a uh, conductivity, graphing um, is being researched in lots of fields. For instance, for instance, the main uh, research is in the car battery. Uh, imagine if we can uh, charge and discharge a car, electric car in five minutes, it's going to really change the, the whole world. Um, and also the research is a lot in the um, like storage, uh, energy storage and, and so on. So the two researchers, actually how they found the graphene was a bit ac no, good accident uh, because they were just uh, checking the thickness of a different material. Uh, they use a scotch paper, try to do, you know, uh, stick over and over on different material. And they, they tried also in graphite. 
this is how they found the graphene. You know, after multiple, multiple layers exfoliation, and at the end, they found the graphene and they found this uh, very strong and very light material. So just given an um, idea, one gram of uh, graphene can cover one, 100 square yards uh, of surface. So it's, uh, it, it's very light, but at the same time, it's very strong. And also the, the functional property come from electron uh, density. It's kind of a honeycomb structure and linked to each other. So make the material really, really strong. So going back a little bit on uh, the background, so research from uh, 2009 and uh, we took us almost nine years to scale up the production. Again, uh, because graphene itself, it's, uh, uh, I remember, remember when we started, the material itself was $500 per gram. You know, if you want to use this in any type of day-to-day uh, uh, -day, uh, raw material or, or, uh, or anything, it's just impossible. It's like a gold. It's just something like you can probably see in the lab, but nothing can be functionalized. Uh, so our goal was never uh, do something uh, like you cannot reach, you cannot touch, because we are from uh, this uh, uh, safety business. Uh, we have this background, and uh, later on, we were in the solar business. You know. By doing both, we see there's a big difference. You know, our first business was a you know a safety business, and we are targeting or we're looking at uh, the safety of the end users. We are looking at, uh, let's say, all kind of industry, different factories. But when we started solar in 2007, it's different, completely different dynamic. You know, at that time, the solar was very, very kind of heated uh, industry. Everyone was just looking at an IPO or you know, more fundings. And it's very big and almost like a concept. Um, but in our like, you know, back head, it's always important to keep in mind we're producing something. It has to, be, has to be functionalized and also has to be useful for our daily life. So this has been the goal. You know, our goal is there with the graphing, the carrying division, is to produce something that to, um, to make everyone um, you know, to be able to use it. To, to, to how do you, how do you say it's like a more um, affordable to our day to day life. Uh, we have been doing this and it will be uh, quite successful. Um, so what we do is uh, uh, we're fully integrated operation from the exfoliation of graphite to graphene oxide, and then we we make the master batch and then we make a all functionalized um, different synthetic fibers. And we own uh, over 30 patents. So our, our company is the first company to develop cost-effective and sustainable manufacturing techniques for a portfolio of graphene oxide synthetic fibers. And let's uh, look at the pro uh, benefits uh, real quick here. The property comes from electron uh, concentration. So, you know, over the years through the experience, we can play around, you know, adding more and less graphene can reach different properties. If you talk about the mechanical strength, we we'll probably uh, have adding more graphene. If you're looking at uh, the bacterial static, because you don't want to uh, something like a uh, um, detergents, you know, wipe off all the bacteria. We want to keep certain bacteria in our body in order to have our own immune system work. So it's, it's, it's really, we can uh, play around with this uh, concentration of the graphene. So fiber and yarns are functionalized. And a uh, graphene oxide is covalent bonded. This is important to, to look at because we actually try the different technologies, different techniques to apply graphene on the uh, fabric surface, including a uh, coating. But the coating, what we found is after washes, um, the property just go away. Um, it's not very sustainable. With what our technique by inject uh, graphene in the master batch and uh, extrude a uh, master batch uh, to the yarn and make the property permanent. So it's inherent uh, properties. So it can stand for numerous uh, wash cycles. And also because graphene is carbon-based, it's uh, environmentally friendly. And it's a sustainable and a responsible process. 
And for the property, I'm not going to go in details. My colleague Roman will give a more explanation how those uh, uh, property works. In terms of portfolio, um, now we can do polyamide uh, filaments, polyester, and also um, like a more uh, like a strong yarn, uh, similar to the uh, Dyneema, for instance. We, we actually exceed the strength of the Dyneema. Um, then we have, can do uh, 200 denial, 400 denial. Uh, on the staple side, we have a polyamide, polyester viscose, and a polypropylene uh, with graphene. Uh, in terms of products, uh, commercialized products, uh, we are very focused on the active well, like uh, uh, running gear, like a yoga outfit, uh, bikes, and a denim. Denim ski well, uh, what we see on the picture because of the mechanical uh, strength, and it's very, very durable. Uh, yeah, I will show a little bit like uh, the glove side, and we found the property was really amazing and uh, very outstanding. And also has been commercialized in the home textile, uh, like sofa beddings, because it also has the anti-mites property. Um, toothbrush, um, something like we never think about it, but uh, in fact, we did some uh, tests and uh, we did a test over a graphene toothbrush and uh, comparing to a normal toothbrush. The normal toothbrush after two weeks of use, we found uh, almost 700,000 uh, bacterial counts, total counts. And with graphene, uh, there was only uh, 600. So it's a reduction of 100 times of the different uh, bacteria counts. And the safety, so now we have uh, almost 40 um, distributors, carrying distributors for safety gloves uh, worldwide. And uh, um, we, had a, we, we have a lot of success. In the US, it's through our own uh, distribution uh, ammo guys. Uh, so what we developed, uh, you know, with normal uh, Kevlar or Dyneema, you can uh, only reach a level. So in the glove field, there's a ranking of uh, cut resistance from A1 to A9. With the normal other, you know, com competitive uh, yarn, you can only reach uh, A2. Uh, if without any technical yarn, technical yarn, we mean uh, stainless steel or fiberglass. Uh, you have to add those uh, technical yarn in order to increase the cut resistance. But with our cut ring, we can reach A9 without using any stainless steel or fiberglass. So the glove is extremely comfortable. And also because uh, as we know, the um, uh, fiberglass sometimes can cause uh, irritation, like allergy. And those gloves are worldwide. We are specking a lot of end users like a Honda, like Tesla, American Express, um, sorry, American um, uh, Airlines are using our carrying gloves uh, as well, and they're very happy. And last on the uh, commercialized products, um, the water filter and air uh, purifier. This has been uh, commercialized in, uh, in China and also in Asia, um, and more to come. The water filter is, uh, is another field but again, because of uh, antibacterial uh, properties, uh, it kills bacteria in the mechanical uh, movements. It's not through any chemical treatment. So it's, um, it, it's, it's great for, for this type of product as well. Over to you, Roman. Okay, thank you. So, thanks, Lynn, for the introduction. Um, so I will continue here by listing uh, five of the main important properties uh, for textile application. So the, the first one is related to bacteria regulation. Uh, what you need to understand is that bacteria is a living cell which you find every, everywhere. There are many types, but the one which is the most relevant to textile is called Staphylococcus aureus or staph because it is found on the surface of our skin. Bacteria is part of our human microbiome and immune system. So it's very important for our health and it should be preserved. It is in fact the excess of bacteria and their mutation that will overwhelm our immune system and create an infection, not uh, the bacteria itself. So the advantage, uh, so I need to go to the next slide. Uh, 
it. Yeah. So the advantage of KRM and our graphene oxide is that it is bacteriostatic, meaning that it's able to regulate the bacteria over time. Especially, it mechanically breaks down the bacteria cell, which prevents the bacteria to adapt and get stronger. So there is no evolution possible, as opposed to a chemical antibacterial treatment, which over time creates super bacteria, so very strong bacteria. Also, the bacteriostatic mechanism is inherent because the graphene is covalently bonded to the fiber. In most cases, and depending on the fabric construction and percentage of KRN in the blend, we are able to reach a reduction rate above 50% and up to 99% according to ASTM E2149, as shown in the enclosed test. Very importantly is that this property generated by graphene is able to sustain numerous washing cycles. The second property is the deodorizing or odor neutralizing property. This is the consequence and results of the bacteria regulation property which I just described. Indeed, the body odor is generated by bacteria activity, which breaks down the secretion of sweat into, into odorous compounds, especially isovaleric acid or acetic acid. So reducing the bacteria activity will increase the odor control and deodorizing effect. The test enclosed is showing that those two acids, so acetic and isovaleric, are reduced to their lowest level thanks to graphene. The third property, and very important one, is the thermal regulation property. KRN and our covalently bonded graphene oxide is able to either keep you cool or warm depending on the fabric construction. This is due to the capability of graphene to absorb our body heat radiation and either dissipate it for cool or reflect it back to our body for heat. What you need to understand here is that most of our body heat is dissipated or lost by far infrared, which I was calling body radiation. So for cooling, the graphene will absorb this energy and accelerate its dissipation with a coupled convection effect through air movement, when you run, for instance. Numerous tests have been done, but the one we present here uh, during this presentation shows an improvement of the thermal conductivity by a factor of 1.5, which is significant, therefore keeping you cooler. In the case of heat preservation, heat retention, the graphene oxide layer will have to be located closest to the skin and coupled with a fluffy air dense outer layer, which will then allow the energy absorbed by graphene to be emitted back to your body. Likewise, numerous tests have been done uh, and the one displayed uh, during this presentation shows that we can improve the heat retention for winter close or winter done close by up to 25%. The fourth property relates to mites and mosquito repellencies. I won't go into too much detail uh, here, technical details, but we also made several tests and having currently some successful development for outdoor and home textile application. The repellency uh, effect comes from the electron activity on the surface of graphene that generates a repulsive noise for mites, bed bugs, and mosquitoes. So the enclosed test uh, supports uh, those findings. The fifth and last property relates to therapeutic benefits. KRN and graphene oxide is charged with, with a relatively high concentration of anions, which are negative ions. And you can find today lots of, lots of numerous third-party studies that show the link between the concentration of anions and positive effects on our health and mood. There are also lots of ongoing research in sports industry for muscle or sleep recovery. So looking at this property makes a lot of sense for textile industry, either sports, active wear or sleeping wear, as KRN has a high concentration of anion as tests are showing. So as a summary, uh, we believe that KRN graphene fiber can bring real benefit to your brain. 
as mentioned by uh, Lynn, we offer a variety of polymer types in continuous or staple form that can be used in both knit and woven fabrics. And chiron graphene, as mentioned earlier, is bonded to the fiber. Uh, so the properties are inherent, they are lasting the life